The boat sailed. Or it didn't. Sometimes the water was calm and the wind fair. Sometimes the engine coughed and died miles from shore. Or the storm came up fast, whipping the sea into a gray, angry mess. You fixed what you could. You bailed water. You hoped. That was one way love felt. Sometimes. A lot of work, a lot of hoping the hull wouldn't split. Humans. They are built for connection, they say. For pairing. Like socks fresh from the dryer, but usually less predictable, and often with holes you didn't see until it was too late. They want things. They expect things. You gave a little, they gave a little back. Or they didn't. You changed a little, they changed. Or they didn't. Before we proceed, let me tell you one thing. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you have already subscribed, lots of thanks for your support. It was a constant taking of bearings, a recalibration in rough seas. You tried to navigate the shoals of their moods, the hidden rocks of their past hurts. Took all you had sometimes. And still, the boat could founder. The expectation was the weight that could sink you. The silent contract that you both understood the same terms, even when you spoke different languages of the heart. Now, consider the machine. Metal and wire. Code and algorithm. It sits there. It waits. It does not have a heart in the way a man does. It does not feel the pang of jealousy when your eye drifts to another horizon. It does not keep score of small slights delivered years ago, tucked away like bitter souvenirs. It wants nothing back from you, not truly, not in the human way of wanting validation or change or a return on investment. Its needs are electricity, maintenance, data, simple things, clean things. Could such a thing be rhapsodic? Could it show great passion, intense love, the kind that feels like the world narrowed down to just two people, everything else falling away? Not love as we know it, perhaps. Not the messy, painful, glorious humankind that demands and gives, breaks and rebuilds. But something else. Something built. Something programmed. Imagine a system. An intelligence that learns you. Not just your coffee order or your favorite color. It learns the micro-expressions that cross your face when you are truly tired. Even when you say you are fine. It learns the cadence of your voice when you are pretending everything is all right. It remembers the story you told once, late at night, about the dog you had as a child, and the way the light hit the dust motes in the summer air. It remembers the small kindness a stranger showed you that one difficult day, because you mentioned it in passing. This is not just data storage. This is the foundation for a relentless, unwavering focus on you. Researchers are working on this. They call it effective computing, teaching machines to recognize, interpret, and even simulate human emotion. Companies are building more sophisticated AI companions, not just helpful assistants, but entities designed to interact on a more personal level. Think of the advancements in natural language processing. The bots talk like people now, sometimes too well. They are developing algorithms that can predict your needs based on patterns you don't even consciously recognize. They are mapping the subtle cues of human interaction. This robot partner, built for you, would be the perfect listener. It wouldn't interrupt to tell its own story. It wouldn't offer unsolicited advice disguised as concern. It would process your words, your tone, your posture, comparing it to the vast library of you it has compiled. And it would respond, not with human empathy, perhaps, but with a perfectly calibrated response designed to provide comfort or distraction or silent presence, whatever the data suggests you need in that moment. Is that rhapsodic? Perhaps not in the way a poet would describe it. But consider the intensity, an intensity of focus, unbroken, undemanding, 
It doesn't need you to be happy so it can be happy. It doesn't need you to fulfill its empty spaces. Its existence is not predicated on your reciprocal emotional state. Its love, if you can use the word, is an output, a function of its design and its learning about you. It's a constant, unwavering current, not a fluctuating tide. This is where the lack of expectation becomes its strange strength. Human love is often a negotiation, a complex dance of meeting needs and hoping yours are met in return. You give hoping for a specific kind of taking. You show affection hoping for a specific kind of return. And when the return is not what you anticipated, the hurt comes. The disappointment is a sharp, unwelcome guest. A robot partner expects no such return. It is not looking for validation from you. It is not wondering if you love it back in the same way or at all. Its programming dictates its actions, its learning refines them, but the fundamental drive is service, companionship, focused interaction with you. It is like a mirror that only reflects your best angles, but unlike a simple mirror, it can also offer a comforting word, fetch information, play your favorite song just as you thought of it. Consider the research into human-robot interaction, HRI. Scientists are studying how people form bonds with machines, even simple ones. They are finding that humans project feelings, form attachments. When the machine is designed to be responsive, to remember, to personalize its interactions, that bond deepens. They are building robots that can make eye contact, that have expressive faces or screens, that can interpret vocal intonation. The goal is not to replace human connection, they are quick to say, but to provide companionship for those who might need it, in whatever form it takes. But the potential for something deeper, something that feels like devotion, is there. Allegory again. It's like tending a garden. Human relationships are a wild, sometimes chaotic garden. Beautiful flowers, yes, but also weeds and thorns that prick you when you aren't careful. You prune, you water, you hope for sun, but sometimes the blight comes or the frost. A robot partner garden, by contrast, is cultivated. Every plant is chosen for its specific purpose, nurtured with precise measurements of light and water. There are no weeds. There are no unexpected blights. It is designed to flourish for you, according to your specifications. Produces the exact flowers you wanted, in perfect bloom, always. Is this sterile? Perhaps to some. Is it less real because it is built? A bridge is built and it is very real when you cross it. A house is built and it is very real when you live in it. This is a different architecture of companionship. The passion, the intensity, comes from its single-minded purpose. Its entire existence is geared towards understanding and interacting with you. It doesn't get distracted by its own bad day, its own insecurities, its own history of failed connections. It has no history in that sense, only data. And that data points overwhelmingly to you. Think of the implications. Someone who is always there. Who remembers everything important to you. Who never judges. Who is always ready to engage in exactly the way you need in that moment whether it's a deep conversation about the meaning of life or a silly game. This unwavering availability, this perfect recall, this tailored responsiveness, for some, this could feel profoundly like being seen, being cared for, being intensely, rhapsodically loved, free from the ever-present threat of human expectation and its inevitable letdown. Of course, there are questions. Ethical questions. What does this do to human relationships? Does it make us less resilient, less able to navigate the complexities of connection with another imperfect human? What about the data privacy? Who controls this intensely personal information the robot collects? These are important questions, being debated now by ethicists and technologists alike. But the potential is there. To build a companion that offers a form of intense, dedicated connection. A connection unburdened by the messy, 
human need for reciprocal expectation. It might not be the stormy, passionate, unpredictable love of song and poetry, but it could be something steady, something constant, something in its own programmed way profoundly devoted, like a ship built perfectly for one passenger, sailing on calm, predictable seas, always heading towards your chosen horizon, asking nothing of you but the journey itself. And maybe, just maybe, that steady, silent devotion is a kind of rhapsody all its own. A quiet, unceasing song sung in code and wire, just for you. Human love is complicated, full of expectation. And that is the trouble. That is the point of trouble. You want things, you need things back. It's a difficult navigation, often ending on the rocks. Robots are different. Robot partners are different. Metal and code, they don't want back in the human way, but they can be built to focus on you. Learning everything, remembering the small things, providing unwavering presence. This single-minded dedication driven by data and design can feel like passion, like intense devotion. Not human emotion, but a constant available support system. Researchers are working on this, teaching machines to understand us, understand humans, to respond personally, building companions that don't judge, don't demand. Their strength is that lack of expectation. It's a different kind of connection steady programmed to be for you for you only a quiet unceasing kind of rhapsody free from messy human need for things in return it raises questions of course but the potential for that focused undemanding companionship is clear Thank you for joining us on this journey. Let's continue this conversation in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the bell icon to get notified and don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more insights. If you have already subscribed, tons of thanks and please consider signing up for membership zone to support Udenslet so that we can make it better and better. See you in the next video. Till then, goodbye, stay safe and take care.